Hey everyone, this is Adam, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to automatically style your Figma layers from a spreadsheet using the CopyDoc plugin. So to get started, all we need to do is go to the little resources icon up here in your Figma file. If you click on that and search for CopyDoc, so that's C-O-P-Y-D-O-C, -O -O and under the plugins tab, if you click on the CopyDoc item, you can run the plugin by either clicking this run button here, or I'd recommend clicking on this more options icon here and just clicking on the save button and that'll save it to your plugins list for easy access later. So I've already gone ahead and done that. So I'm gonna to go to my canvas and right click anywhere. I'm just gonna go down to plugins and then go down to saved plugins. And then I'm just gonna click on the copy doc item to run the plugin that we just saved a second ago. So if you're new to the plugin, it has a bunch of different features that helps you to update content in Figma. But for today, I'm just gonna be focusing on the sync spreadsheet feature down here. If you're interested in the other ones, I'd recommend checking out the other videos in the CopyDoc playlist on the YouTube channel. But for today, I'm just gonna be going through how to use CSS in a spreadsheet to automatically style your Figma layers in your design automatically. So to get started, all we need to do is open up a new spreadsheet. So if you go to either Google Sheets or open up uh, something like Excel, you can use either of them and we're basically gonna structure our spreadsheet to match the Figma layers in our design. So for example, I've got this frame here that I wanna style. So I wanna change the background color of this frame and I wanna change the font size of this heading here. And I wanna do that from a spreadsheet. So what I need to do is basically name my Figma layers with a certain uh, convention. So in this case, I've chosen to use heading and I've chosen to use home. And I've put a little hash in front of it just to make it really clear that that's what I'm using it for. And then in my spreadsheet, I'm basically putting those layer names in the top row, which is the header row. And these are gonna be the labels that will match up our Figma designs with our spreadsheet. So once you've done that, then you can go ahead and start writing CSS inside of the content underneath those columns. So what I mean by that is, for example, if you wanted to change the background color of this frame, uh, you can basically put in a CSS rule of background dash color with a little uh, colon, and then hash the hex value. So I'll show you what that actually looks like now. So if we import this into Figma, you can do that by clicking on the share button up here if you're using Google Sheets, and just make sure that the general access setting is set to anyone with the link, and then click on copy link. And once you've copied that, go back into CopyDoc in the plugin and click on the sync spreadsheet button down here. And then you can paste in your Google Sheets link down here and wait for that to load up. And that's gonna let you select the tab in your spreadsheet that you wanna use. So in this case, I'm just gonna be using the home screen tab. I'm gonna click on use selected sheet. And then I'm gonna click on the artboard over here. So the home layer that we uh, named. And then I'm gonna click on the sync rows button here. So I'm gonna click on sync rows. And you can see that it's updated our layers from the spreadsheet. So it's gone ahead and changed that background color for us. And it's changed the font size over here based on the values that we had in our spreadsheet. So you can see we had a background color of 818AF9, and that's now been added to the spreadsheet over here. So that's the value we used. And over here, we set the font size using CSS to 28 pixels. And you can see here, it's updated the font size to 28 pixels. So that's just a really quick example of what you can do with the plugin. I'm gonna show you a few more examples now if you wanna have a look at those. Uh, so I'll go to my app screen now. So I've got this app screen that I wanna make a few changes on. So I've set up another tab in my uh, Google Sheet and this one I've just called app screen so I know what it is. And I've done the exact same thing. I've gone through and I've basically named the layers that I wanna change. So for example, I've got this hero block. So I've called that hash hero block in my Figma design and that's just a Figma frame. Uh, that's got a background color on it. And I basically have gone into my spreadsheet, added hero block to the row up here, and I've just set a few properties that I wanna change. So I wanna change the background color. So I wanna change that to a different background color to match this one. And I wanna change the text to be white. So you can do this two ways. You can either uh, change the individual text layer names. So for example, I've done that over here with the staff name. So down in this little card component, I've got a layer called staff name and I'm gonna be changing that color to this other color over here. So you can do it individually per text layer, but if you wanna change all of the text layer uh, styling in a single frame, so for example, I wanna change these two text layer uh, colors to be white instead of black. So what you can do is you can actually just target the frame. So in this case, I've got the hero block and all I'm doing in that hero block is I'm saying that I basically want the 
uh, color to be white. So color is gonna apply the text color. And I could also do things like change the font size. So I could actually change that font size uh, to be something else. So I could make that 14 pixels and that'll basically change it. Actually, it's already at 14. So I'll just change that to be uh, 16 pixels and that will change it in a second as well. So that's basically how you can apply multiple text layer changes at once. And then I've also done things like change the menu. So I've got the menu down here and I'm basically gonna make that menu, which I've named hash menu. I'm gonna have that have an opacity of 0.3 and I'm gonna change the background color and same thing over here. So I'm basically gonna change the font size of these card frames and there's a couple of them in here. So I've named both of them card frame. So it's gonna find both of those when we uh, select the frame in a second and it's gonna change all the fonts in there to be 10 pixels. So I'll show you what that's gonna look like now. So I'm gonna, again, grab the share link and just copy that, jump back into Figma. I'm gonna close off this window and open it back up and drop in my spreadsheet link so I can select a new tab. So this time I wanna work with the app screen tab. So I'm gonna click on that and use selected sheet. And once again, you'll get a little preview of what the column names are, just that it's gonna load up. And all you need to do again is just select the element or elements uh, as we'll go through in a minute that you wanna select. And again, click on sync rows. And so you can see here again, it's updated the layers from the spreadsheet. So in this case, we can just briefly go through the changes that it made. So as we saw before, we set the hero block to have a background color of purple. And we also set the color, which applies to uh, text. So that's not a background color. Color always means text color. So we've got the color set to white. So it's changed that for us. We also increased the font size to 16. So in retrospect, that was a bit uh, too big. So we could always just go back and change that again. And then we also set a border radius of 20. So before that didn't have a border radius at all, uh, that frame. Uh, so now we've got the border radius there. So I'll show you what that looked like a second ago. If we just undo that. So you can see here, no border radius. And because we specified the border radius of 20 pixels, it's now got a border radius of 20 pixels in here as well, as you can see up here. Uh, and as I briefly went through, we've also changed the uh, font size of the card frames to 10 pixels. So those have been set to 10 pixels, but then we've also got a bigger size up here. And the reason for that is because after we set the uh, card frame size of 10 pixels, after that, we've got a staff name attribute uh, layer and that one's being set to 22 pixels. So the spreadsheet's basically looping through these columns, getting to this one, applying 10 pixels to all of the text inside that frame. And then it's getting to this one and then it's overriding that again to be 22 pixels instead with a font weight of bold. So you can see here that it's uh, set to bold at 22 pixels. So that's basically what that looks like uh, there to apply a bunch of different changes with nested text changes as well. So that's another cool example that uh, is a nice way to change a bunch of different layers in a single frame. But if you wanna, if you wanna make this uh, change to multiple frames and have different styles per frame, you can do that as well. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna go back to my spreadsheet, jump over to this card styles tab that I've got set up. And what I basically wanna do here is apply a couple of different styles depending on what order the selected row is in my selection. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So here I've got two card frames. I've got card frame here and I've got a card frame here. They're both called hash card frame. And they're basically the same component with the same uh, type of content. But what I wanna do is apply different styles to both of these uh, in this little block here. So what I've done is in my spreadsheet, you'll notice that I've got two rows set up underneath my headings. So I've got the card frame here. I've got the staff name layer, which is just a text layer. I've got the staff role layer as well, uh, which we're gonna change some styles on. And then I've also got this staff photo. So this is a uh, image layer just with a photo. And I've also called that staff photo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna apply a different color background to the first card and the second card. So they will be different colors. And then I'm just gonna basically go through and apply the same styles for everything else. So I'll show you what that looks like now. So we can basically go through and uh, apply this by doing the same process. So I'm gonna click on share. I'm gonna click on copy link and copy that one. And just to uh, demonstrate this even further, I'm just gonna change uh, this one to be a bit different as well on the, on the top. And same thing for the bottom here. I'm gonna make this one a little bit smaller. So just so we can really see what's going on here. 
So now if I, again, go back to my copy.doc plugin, click on sync spreadsheet, drop in that sheet again, and this time I'm gonna select the card styles tab, the one that we we're just looking at, click on use selected sheet. And this time what we're gonna do is we're not gonna select the parent frame. We're gonna actually select these nested frames. So we're gonna click on both of these. So we've got two layers selected as we can see down here. And because we've got two rows also in our sheet, what it's gonna do is it's basically gonna loop through the selection. So it's gonna go one, two, and it's gonna map those up to row one and two in here. So I'll show you what that looks like now. So we can go ahead and click on sync rows. And you can see here again, it's updated the layers from the spreadsheet, but this time it's used the different rows to apply different styling to our selection. So we've only got two uh, layers selected here, but you can imagine having a dozen layers or two dozen layers selected like that with a dozen or two dozen variants in your spreadsheet rows down here. And you can basically just change those as you need to. So you can have a different style per selection uh, in those repeatable rows. So uh, as, we, as we just looked at, you can basically see that the heading up here is set to be a little bit bigger at 24 pixels. And the one down here, we set to 18 pixels. So those two are getting mapped a little bit differently. And we also changed the background color to be white on the top one and slightly off white on the bottom one. So you can see that's been applied here as well uh, with that hex value. Uh, the other cool thing you can do is you can actually change the order. So if you don't wanna sync it from uh, top to bottom, you can actually change the order that it gets synced at. So we could change it so it sorts the Figma selection from bottom to top. So that would basically reverse the application of these. So if we selected those and clicked on synced rows, uh, that would basically reverse it. So I'll just do that again and undo the changes first, just so it's kind of uh, back to what we originally had it. So again, I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna select both of those layers. This time I'm gonna go from bottom to top instead of top to bottom. And that's basically gonna apply the first row from the bottom up. So if I select that bottom to top, sync rows, and this time it's basically used uh, the second row, which is the first uh, row of changes, and it's applied that to the bottom, and then the next one is applying it to the one up here. So that's just a really quick way of reversing the layer order. And you can also do that based on a bunch of other properties as well. So I'll leave you to play around with that in your own time. And the last one I wanted to do is just show you how to use this in combination with content. So if you wanted to change the content of these cards as well, so what you need to do is basically just make another tab or another spreadsheet with those same names. And instead of using CSS rules this time, so these ones are all using CSS rules, uh, this time you're just gonna use plain text content. So no CSS, uh, nothing like that. It's just plain text content uh, with either text or image links. So if you use an image link on a layer that accepts images in Figma, it will automatically download those images and swap them out. So I'll show you what that looks like now. So I'm just gonna go to my uh, share button, grab that and copy the link one more time. And if I just jump back into my sync spreadsheet uh, item over here, paste that in. And for the final example, we're just gonna select the cards content tab. And again, let's click on use selected sheet. And if we now again, click on these two rows. So this is the same method that we just used in the card styles one but this time we're gonna be using it for content, just regular content, just to show you what that looks like. And I'm basically just gonna finalize that as my uh, last example. So again, you can see we've got a bit of a preview and this time you'll notice that it's not showing the little theme icon. It's showing that this is actually being detected as normal text content and an image replacement here. So these columns, it's understanding uh, what kind of content it, that is and it's telling us that it's gonna map it to those layers that we've got selected. So again, I'm just gonna select both of those card frame layers as the parent layers and loop through those. This time I'm just gonna to go uh, top to bottom and click on sync rows. And that's basically gonna sync up the content. So you can see here, it's updated the layers from the spreadsheet. And this time it hasn't done style updates because we didn't use any CSS. This is just a regular old uh, content update, just the way that you would usually do this with the copy doc uh, plugin, the main kind of content sync feature. So this is basically just showing you how to do uh, content changes inside of the spreadsheet. And you can actually do uh, a mixture. So if you wanted to do style changes and content changes in the same tab, you can definitely do that. The only thing to be mindful of is you can't repeat the, the, the label. So if you had two things of staff name and one was color 
and one was uh, text, uh, that's, that's probably not going to work. That's just going to double up and get a bit confused. But if you wanted to basically do uh, staff role style, so if you wanted to do staff role, uh, change that to you know black text or something like that, and then you didn't repeat that for content, you could basically have that like this, and that would automatically uh, apply the styles for the staff role uh, layer, and it would apply content for these other layers here. So you can kind of mix and match. You just can't do a style and content for the same layer at the same time. Uh, so that's the only thing to be mindful of. The easiest way to do it is just to try and keep your uh, tabs or spreadsheets separate. It's probably a good idea just to do styles in one and then uh, split out the content in another one as we just did a second ago. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, as I mentioned, you can do this with an Excel file as well. So if you don't want to use uh, the spreadsheet uh, from Google Sheets, you can basically just do this with a regular uh, Excel file as well. So you can structure it in the exact same way. And I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so if we open up the spreadsheet, you can basically just either download your sheet from Google Sheets, just download it as an Excel file, or you can just create a new Excel file in Excel and create tabs or create uh, the same layout. And then you'll be able to drag and drop that into the plugin. So if you click on sync spreadsheet, and then if you drag and drop your Excel file into this little drop zone, it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna give you the options for your tabs. So for example, we could do the app screen uh, design again. So I'm gonna click on app screen, use selected sheet, and then click on app and click on sync rows. So I'm gonna click sync rows. And again, you can see we've done the exact same process as we just went through with the Google Sheets version, uh, this time just using a regular Excel file uh, instead. So that's just an alternative. If you prefer to use uh, a local file, uh, you can basically go ahead and do that and that's just going to import it uh, much more quickly because it doesn't have to request the Google Sheets link every time. So using a local Microsoft Excel file is also a great alternative uh, if you prefer to do it that way. It's going to work exactly the same. You just have to structure the spreadsheet the same way that we've just went through and you're welcome to use Microsoft Excel instead of Google Sheets if you prefer to do that. The last thing that I just wanted to really briefly mention is you can find a reference of the supported CSS properties by clicking on the sync spreadsheet icon down here. And if you go ahead and click on the CSS docs link, so there's a little link here that says CSS docs, you can click on either of those and that'll basically take you to the Hypermatic uh, copy doc documentation site. So uh, that's just a quick overview there. So thank you as always for watching and we'll be back soon with more Figma tutorials like this one.